In this chapter, we'll show you the new note expression to your MIDI performance, the new Halion Sonic SE virtual instrument to get the most out of note expression, how to add articulations to your MIDI performance, useful ways to employ the group edit function to manage several parts more efficiently, how the new hit point system works, and the use of enhanced quantizing features with audio. Steinberg has introduced a revolution in MIDI editing with Cubase 6. It's called Note Expression, and it will radically change how we think about and work with MIDI notes. To fully understand this, let's take a closer look at how MIDI works. We already learned that basic MIDI data contains note on and note off commands so that electronic instruments can be triggered remotely. Soon the MIDI protocol was expanded to include other data besides note on and note off. All of this other data is collectively known as controller commands. But the MIDI standard sends data out along channels. This means if you're playing a four note chord through a string sound and wish to add modulation, you had to modulate all four notes. In a real ensemble, it's unlikely all four players would use exactly the same vibrato at the same time. You can't reach inside the chord and send controller information to just one note, because MIDI works on channels. Another limitation of the MIDI standard and its channel-based design becomes obvious when editing. Here's an example of MIDI performance with several associated lanes of controller data. The notes are shown here. But down here, we see multiple channels of controller information. This can make accurate editing very difficult because you have to edit both the note lanes and the controller lanes. Steinberg's new note expression protocol removes both of these limitations. The first thing it does is present all the controller information with the note data, visually associating the two. Let's look at the same MIDI passage and its controller data again, but using the new note expression system. Now you can select a group of notes and have instant visual access to all the controller parameters. And if you edit this group of notes, the controller information will be edited at the same time, so you can cut, copy, and paste without losing the feel of the performance. But even more remarkable is the way note expression lets you apply controller information to individual notes, not just to channels. You can reach inside a MIDI chord and apply controller data to some notes and not others. Here's how pitch bend was forced to work before note expression. But listen to how we can use note expression to pitch bend just one of these notes. Amazing! You can record note expression data in real time as an overdub or even draw it in, and the operations manual covers all of these items in a step-by-step -step fashion. You'll also see new tabs for note expression and for the expression map in the updated key editor. Here, you'll also have the ability to map the dynamics of your performance to the articulations in its score. If you create a new controller lane for articulations and dynamics in the key editor, 
you can use Dynamics Mapping to control what articulation symbols appear automatically in the score. Conversely, as you change articulations in the score, you'll hear changes in the dynamics of your MIDI performance. In order to apply controller information on the note level, as we've just seen, you have to use a note expression compatible instrument. Fortunately, Steinberg included such an instrument with Cubase 6. This is the Halion Sonic SE. Halion Sonic SE is a smaller version of Steinberg's flagship workstation, Halion Sonic. Halion Sonic SE is capable of interpreting note expression data right out of the box. Any sound which is compatible with note expression will have Note EXP in its name. Halion Sonic is a true workstation. You can open its editor and load up numerous sounds and play them back in combination or use them as separate sound modules for multi-track performances. Halion Sonic SE is also loaded with numerous innovative performance controllers and devices such as the Orb and Trigger Pads. Let's take a quick tour. And that's only scratching the surface. Another new feature in Cubase 6 is the Group Edit feature for folder tracks. This provides you a quick way to apply one edit to multiple tracks at the same time. To use the Group Edit, create a folder track. Then, place all the tracks you wish to edit inside the folder. To make this easier, you can use the new command, Select Tracks to Folder, to help set up your edit group quickly. Then, enable the Group Edit button, and any edits you will make will be applied to all the tracks in that folder. Some other enhancements include a Smart Grid in the main project window that automatically scales to the selected quantized value. And the Transport Nudge feature works with the new Smart Grid to move the cursor by one increment of the current quantized value. You can now export all of the data on your notepads to a text file. And the Delete key will no longer delete tracks. Previously, it was very easy to accidentally delete a track by pressing the Delete key too many times the default settings in Cubase 6 requires that you use the menu item Remove Selected Track to avoid accidental deletions. Other new features include a more logical layout and naming record modes on the transport panel. And the Preferences menu now lets you configure the track arming behavior for MIDI tracks and audio tracks separately. The hit point detection in Cubase 6 has been improved as well. If you're new to Cubase, hit points are used for detecting the beat of a recording and then slicing it or warping it to change the tempo. In previous versions of Cubase, hit points were calculated for the entire waveform based on time. This system worked well, but often created too many hit points and it aligned them with the beginning of a sound. The new system is much more musical. Detection is now based on volume, and hit points are placed at much more musical locations, such as on set instead of note transient. 
This is a small change that makes a big difference because Cubase now hears the beat like you and I. To calculate hit points, open the sample editor. Open the appropriate tab in the inspector. You'll notice that the sensitivity slider has been replaced with this threshold slider. The threshold slider is used to select hit points, but it works off volume and you can see a visual guide on the editor. This makes it easier to filter out crosstalk and noise signals that have no relevance to this track. The operations manual covers how to edit, move, and delete hit points in detail. Cubase 6 also provides the option to create MIDI notes. This is a great feature if you want to use a live drum performance to trigger sample drum sounds, a technique known as drum replacement. You could also use these MIDI notes to simply augment your live drum sound with additional samples or sonic textures. Once you've added hit points to a piece of audio, you can slice it and apply quantization or automatic timing adjustments. The quantize tools in Cubase 6 are much more streamlined than previous versions. They're all consolidated on one quantize panel instead of placed on separate drop-down menus. You can drag and drop MIDI data to the panel to create a groove map. And most of the MIDI quantize functions can now be used with audio quantizing. This is because Audio Quantize now provides audio clips with start, end, and length information, just like a MIDI note. There's even a catch range which allows you to quantize some beats and not others. Let's move on to Chapter 9, where we'll see how to use tempo estimation, MIDI effects, the arranger track, and side chaining to take your production into new directions.